Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, just wait. Uh, I will start. Uh, okay. Uh, Good morning, all. Uh, it's my great pleasure to, uh, for uh, introducing our speaker, Dr. Sachin uh, Bose, sir. Uh, regarding, uh, sir, uh, he has uh, completed PhD from IIT Mumbai in uh, mechanical thermal fluid engineering. And if I uh, tell about the experience of sir, then uh, nearly about five years industrial experience as well as uh, more than 15 years of academic experience. Uh, and uh, sir has uh, on a project handled uh, handed it by the sir is uh, almost uh, nearly about 10 number of projects uh, he used to handle right now uh, regarding publication if i say then uh, national publication and international publication more than uh, 30 numbers are there and as well as uh, uh, he used to go for the workshops and conference as a resource persons uh, even sir has won patent on uh, this for preventing breakage of uh, boiling eggs in uh, Indian pan curry uh, during boilings. Uh, and more than uh, 60s expert lectures already conducted by this sir. So I welcome you sir uh, for this webinar. So today sir is going to give uh, a webinar on the topic that is uh, CFD for automotive applications and obviously uh, in this topic, we should all be deeply interested because CFD is an uh, engineering tool which is used uh, to simulate the actions of engineering for different applications. And uh, we all know that many industries in, uh, in their development works to analyze, optimize and uh, verify the performance of designs before uh, going for a costly prototypes and uh, physical taste. Uh, so they are using CFD tools. Uh, so today, sir, is going to talk uh, on the CFD for automotive applications. And once again, uh, I welcome you, sir. And uh, thank you. I request you to uh, start with your presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, thank you. So I uh, thanks. Uh, good morning to all. First of all, and I am very thankful uh, to the Perul University for inviting me to deliver the lecture. I am very thankful to the Om Kamal Washi, sir for his nice uh, introduction. Uh, I will not spend uh, much time and now I will share my PPT and I will start the lecture. Uh, so good morning to all. Uh, I will just share the, my PPT. Okay, please allow me to share the uh, PPT or make me the presenter. show from the beginning and so uh, very good morning to all uh, today uh, i will take uh, the webinar on the topic called as uh, Computational fluid dynamics for automotive application. I have divided the lecture into the three parts. Uh, first part, I will give the introduction to CFD. Second part, I will uh, talk about the aerodynamics and uh, then I will talk about the engine simulation. So first uh, we'll go to the CFD, we'll understand the CFD. So let us start. What is the CFD is? Okay, uh, so this is the content. Uh, before we start any subject, we understand uh, the definition of it uh, so that uh, we get uh, uh, clear understanding what it is. Uh, so CFD is basically, it is a simulation 
okay and uh, uh, the, this simulation is of what fluid flow and heat transfer and maybe associated uh, uh, phenomena like chemical reaction so basically cfd contains two things uh, one is modeling that is called as mathematical modeling where we form the governing equation and then we use uh, numerical methods to solve that uh, governing equation okay uh, earlier uh, people so uh, earlier uh, people uh, uh, what they did they uh, made their own programs and they utilized their programs for their application even in the big companies if you take like uh, general electric they are having their own uh, cfd programs but as uh, the commercial softwares are more uh, robust as compared to the uh, we can say prepared by us uh, so basically people turn to uh, what is called as commercial softwares now even uh, if you uh, take the example of general electric so uh, what they do is uh, they use the commercial software like uh, fluent and cfx now uh, we'll move uh, to the uh, point uh, where uh, how can we use the cfd for design this is understand uh, basically cfd is uh, we can say uh, complements uh, experiments uh, here we can predict uh, the performance hydraulic and thermal performance of the system okay so we'll come to know how will be the performance of your machine then next is uh, we can try uh, plenty alternative options which otherwise in expense are time consuming uh, requires manpower and expensive okay so we can try many uh, alternative options let's like example i can try 100 cases and study on the computer and then shortlist maybe five and then five we can go for experiment so we can save the uh, time as well as money then next is it gives a detailed insight of the flow uh, which is uh, otherwise difficult because uh, in experiment what happens we get the variable uh, at the location where we have fitted the sensor at other location we didn't don't get the value of that particular variable okay so uh it gives detail inside which is not uh, possible with the experiments now we know that there are uh, three dimensions of the any research one is experimental analytical and numerical numerical means same okay so uh, what approach can be used to validate the other approach please understand as a researcher you should know that whatever you measure is not always correct there may be error in the measuring instrument there may be faulty instrument so we have to validate the experiment result with the some other uh, means so we use uh, cfd for this and next is uh, cfd makes uh, design process uh, more scientific so earlier like i will give the example of pump industry i was in the pump industry people uh, used to make trial and error method for designing but we know that a trial and error method is a luck based method if you are lucky you will get solution if you are unlucky it will take the years okay so what we need is a more scientific method and uh, the cfd is more scientific method and uh, we can design the system okay so this is about uh, how it can help uh, to design now uh, 
we can uh, move uh, how what are the steps in the cfd analysis if you're going to cfd analysis uh, we have to decide uh, our goal what is the accuracy what is the time which will be needed okay and then uh, we have to identify the domain domain means the volume where you want to perform the calculations okay so we have to decide the size shape of the domain and also we have to decide uh, whether we can do some uh, simplifications like whether we can make it uh, 2d whether we can make it uh, symmetry we can make the periodicity okay so uh, this simplification uh, will uh, reduce uh, load on the computation okay so it will not make unnecessary uh, number of elements okay it will not make unnecessary a load on the your computation then next uh, we have to identify whether it is uh, viscous flow in viscous flow like in uh, earlier people uh, were uh, using earlier people were using uh, the cfd mostly for uh, aeronautical purpose okay they were using from aeronautical purpose okay so uh, they were uh, considering it as a inviscid why inviscid because uh, if you see the renault number it is a inertial force divided by viscous force the inertial fo force is very very large in case of uh, aeronautical uh, people but in case of uh, mechanical people the viscous force is more so we need to consider viscous for mechanical engineering but uh, aeronautical it is not needed it is negligible then we have to decide uh, whether the flow is laminar or turbulent Uh, why uh, so our uh, turbulent uh, so we have to take the turbulent in the uh, consideration then whether the flow is incompressible or compressible we know that uh, for mechanical engineering the flow is mostly uh, compressible or incompressible it is a incompressible but for aeronautical people Uh, the flow is compressible so what is the criteria for that is mac number if the mac number is uh, more than 0.3 it is uh, compressible so most of uh, cases for mechanical and on automobile the air is compressible it is a uh, incompressible but for aeronautical people air is compressible for mechanical it is incompressible then we have to see whether the fluid is single phase or multi phase like you take the case of pump in case of pump normal performance we can take it as a single phase water but in case of cavitation or calculating the npss we have to consider it as a multi phase then uh, we have to select uh, the right approximation so uh, like whether it is a finite difference or finite volume or it is a structure mesh or order of accuracy that we have to select but most of cases uh, this whether it is finite difference finite volume or finite element it is decided by the software we cannot change that okay but earlier this was the option when we are we were preparing our own programs or the course then comes uh, pre processing in the pre processing
in the pre processing in the pre processing uh, what we do is uh, we divide uh, the domain into the small elements and we know that uh, from differential equation uh, the differential equations are valid for the small elements so we need to divide into the small elements and that small elements are called as the mesh okay then we have to apply the boundary condition give the uh, initial condition compile the program and prepare for the input okay so you can see here the domain which is the step uh, step channel okay it is divided into the elements so generally more the elements more is the accurate uh, uh, solution okay but if you increase the number of elements what happen uh, the time to compute will increase and uh, it will require more storage space okay it will require more storage space then comes uh, solution uh, we have to run the code uh, and uh, monitor the solution okay then comes uh, post processing in the post processing uh, we collect and organize the data analyze uh, the result so uh, in the as it is related to the software two things are related uh, with the cfd verification and uh, validation in the verification uh, what we do is uh, we a uh, cross check whether what we intended to do it is done or not like suppose i want to do the simulation for velocity at the inlet as 1 meter per second okay whether it is 1 meter per second or not okay and then comes uh, validation validation means what we do we uh, cross check with the reality we compare our result with the reality so at the every step uh, for cfd so along with the software we need the understanding good understanding of theoretical fluid mechanics there is a fluid dynamics and heat transfer so knowing software is not enough we should also know or understanding of fluid mechanics and heat transfer should be very good okay so that is the this case okay now um, we move further so uh, what is the aim of uh, doing the cfd analysis so first thing is our interest uh, may be to know the forces like i have given the example here we can see the aeroplane you can see uh, the helicopter we can see the ship here our purpose is to find in case of aeroplane find the lift and drag force okay and in the helicopter same thing to find the lift and as well as drag in the ship our interest is uh, the drag please understand in case of the ship uh, so it is very huge and even the small amount of improvement of performance or reduction in the drag can save the very huge uh, amount of the fuel okay and uh, the invested money on the sh uh, ship uh, we can have early uh, returns on the investment next thing is uh, we may be interested uh, to find the forces and the torque which is acting on the impeller so when i do the cfd simulation for impeller my purpose is to find how much is the pressure rise given by the impeller and uh, total pressure rise and our interest is also to find how much is torque acting on the impeller if i multiply uh, the torque on the impeller with the omega then we can find the power required to operate the impeller please understand if i multiply uh, the 
torque with the if i multiply torque with the omega angular velocity then i can find the power okay i can find the power then then next come uh, next comes can you uh, i want to uh, i want some marker uh, for record, uh, the showing can uh, can you allow me to use the marker i think i am not able to see the marker yes sir yes sir so uh, uh, what i am saying is uh, for velocity field uh, we can use also this cap like uh, on the flow over the car our interest is uh, to plot the streamlines so streamlines are what uh, streamlines are the so are you able to see my ppt now hello yes sir yeah, because the the, the, uh, the zoom or logo it is not showing on the ppt okay it is mean what it's going okay, okay. so the ppt I'm, is visible okay so i'll just go whether i have the option for marker i think it is not still visible okay Okay. So uh, we plot the streamlines. If you know the streamlines, streamlines are what? These are the lines. If you see the definition uh, from the fluid mechanics, these are the lines where the flow will not cross. So at any point on the streamline, if you draw the tangent, that will be the velocity. Tangent means what? The velocity component perpendicular to it is zero. so what happens when we plot the streamlines uh, basically the lines uh, where the flow will not cross okay so what we do after simulation uh, we plot the streamlines and uh, observe the streamline if you find some space within the streamline indicating that there is a chances of flow separation there in that location and what we do uh, in the next iteration we try to match the streamlines okay so we avoid the spaces uh, in the streamline and body and we just try to match the streamline so sometime we call the body which is obtained by doing this uh, exercise is a streamline body okay same uh, concept we will also look in the uh, turbo machinery is like uh, impeller blade we will see whether there is any flow separation and we'll try to avoid in the next uh, iteration like that is uh, what we'll do we'll modify the geometry and again uh, simulate okay that i will i mean the next simulation then our uh, interest uh, may be also to see uh, the temperature distribution you can see here uh, the gas turbine blade you know that uh, gas turbine is a continuous combustion engine unlike our ic engine which is intermittent combustion engine where it gives the time for cooling but here uh, there is a continuous combustion and the blades are subjected uh, to the very high gas temperature so earlier it has happened that it has damaged the blade maybe melting or deformation so uh, nowadays the gas turbine blade is cooled uh, from the compressor here so as a design engineer our interest is to find the temperature distribution in this turbine blade so we can use the cfd and find the temperature distribution the temperature distribution should be uniform if it is a at particular location the temperature is increasing then what will happen it will create the thermal stresses and it is harmful for the life of the blade so as a design engineer we have to design in such way that the temperature distribution is uniform okay second application uh, for cfd for, for heat transfer or temperature distribution is 
heat transfer in the vicinity of the computer chip okay so we know that uh, computer generates a lot of heat and it to be uh, dissipated otherwise if the heat is not dissipated please understand if the heat is not dissipated then what happens the temperature of the system goes on rising and we know that higher the temperature the life of the electronic component decreases so at the end uh, i will add here that ultimate aim of uh, doing the cap analysis is uh, to predict uh, the behavior of the system and to design the more efficient system so our purpose is basically uh, to predict the behavior and after predicting we'll see how to improve and then modify the system and again change so in this way we can go for a more uh, efficient design please understand in the market uh, there is a lot of competition and to sustain in the competition we need to design our product more and more efficient and the cfd can perform uh, well and act as a tool for this now uh, we will see uh, which uh, equations are to be solved uh, in the cfd uh, so we need to solve uh, the continuity equation then we have to solve the momentum equation then if required we have to solve the uh, energy equation now let us see uh, the con the continuity equation it is based on the fact uh, that uh, mass can neither be created uh, nor destroyed okay uh, so uh, for the control volume we can write uh, algebraic summation of rate of mass flow rate in is equals to algebraic summation algebraic summation means what with sign okay is equals to algebraic summation of rate of mass flow rate out so from this we will obtain some equation then uh, we'll move to the uh, momentum equation so momentum equation here it is called as a navier stokes equation please understand uh, this uh, momentum equation is based on newton's law okay newton's law of motion so there are uh, three newton's law first uh, newton law is it is based on the newton's law second newton's law there are uh, basically three uh, newton's law okay first uh, newton's law is what uh, it is uh, gives the definition first newton's law uh, gives the definition of the force it tells that uh, force is the thing uh, which can bring the moving body into the into the rest and uh, the rest body into the motion that thing is the force the second uh, newton's law is uh, about the equation it gives the equation about for the force what is that equation uh, mass into acceleration is equals to force so so most of uh, this derivations or proof we use newton's second law because it gives the equation for the uh, force then newton's third law is about its nature it tells that for every action there is a equal and opposite reaction so this newton's third law it is used in the analysis of turbo machines actually we solve the equation for a uh, fluid but our interest is what force acting on the blade so what we do we find the force experienced by the fluid and then we say the same force will be experienced by the blade but in the opposite direction so now here our interest is what force okay so we use here the equation which uh, govern the force so uh, we use here newton's second law 
uh, and that is about the equation of force and please understand here as the force is a vector quantity we need to solve uh, uh, we need to resolve it in the three direction that's why the momentum equation is having the there are three momentum equation why because it is the equation of force and force is a vector quantity that's why there are the three equation so we'll write this equation in the x direction then we'll write this equation in y direction and then z so we'll just write down here mass into acceleration in i direction is equal to what summation of forces in the three direction x y and z okay so we have to write mass into acceleration in i direction is equal to what summation of force in the i direction so which forces are there uh, in the fluid mechanics basically there are pressure force Visco, uh, pressure force, viscous force, and body force. Okay. So, so now, now next, next, next is the conservation of energy. So it is used for heat transfer or for compressible flow. So it is based on, uh, so it is a mathematical statement here we have to use. Although what is the first law of thermodynamics is energy can neither be created nor destroyed. But we have to use the uh, mathematical equation. So there are two mathematical equations for first law. Uh, that is the first is about the cycle that summation of Q is equals to algebraic summation of Q is equals to algebraic summation of W over the cycle. And the next uh, mathematical statement uh, for uh, first law of thermodynamics is that it's supplied, it's supplied, it, it lies in the two parts. First to uh, change the internal energy and to uh, perform the work. Okay, so this uh, first law of thermodynamics is used uh, in the energy equation. Now, once we apply this, uh, we get some differential equations. Okay, we get some differential equation. So we'll see uh, the differential equation will be in the partial. Uh, So differential equation will be in partial form. Why it is partial equation, uh, partial differential equation? Because here the independent parameter are more than one. If independent parameter is more than one, then it becomes what? Partial differential equation. Like here, independent parameter is x, y, z, and t. As it is more than one, it becomes partial differential equation. Uh, let us uh, this is the continuity equation and now we can see uh, here uh, the three momentum equations now you can see uh, left hand side it, it is uh, mass into acceleration but it is showing the four terms why it is showing the four terms because please understand uh, fluid mechanics, uh, what we use is mostly our Eulerian approach. And the Newton's law, it is for particle, that is the Lagrangian approach. Okay. It is uh, mostly for Lagrangian approach. To convert the Lagrangian to the Eulerian, so this gives the total derivative, that is on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you can see the pressure term that is the pressure force. And then there, there is term that is for viscous force. Okay. Here the body force that is gravity is not taken into consideration. Please understand if you uh, do the simulation for air, uh, then in that case, the gravity force is not much important. Uh, but 
if you go uh, for simulating the water turbine then gravity is uh, important okay so i have not shown here body force gravity force so if you see now uh, so the unknowns are density velocities and pressure so there are uh, four equation and unknown are five so we need additional equation so for compressible flow uh, we take uh, the equation of state as a fifth equation and for uh, incompressible flow we take pressure correction equation so to make the number of unknowns equals to the uh, number of equations okay so if there is a turbulence then we need to solve some additional equations uh either the equation will be one equation or it may be two equation or six equation based on the model like spallard almaras model which is used for external aerodynamics is the thing one equation model k epsilon and k omega are two equation models and renault stress modeling is a six equation models so please understand here that uh, we have to select uh, appropriate uh, turbulence model for given application okay uh, now what happens uh, for a uh, person to start the cfd he should know what the parameters are needed okay what parameters are needed okay so here i will tell you uh, what uh, software will ask it will ask uh, about the model selection first okay it will ask uh, like whether the flow is uh, laminar or turbulent okay now uh, we have to decide uh, laminar turbulent that i will uh, tell you once uh, we reach to that topic okay so whether then it is a single phase or multi phase we have to decide and tell the software whether it is isothermal isothermal is mostly for what uh, when we go for uh, we keep the temperatures on and uh, there is no heat transfer but it is a compressible one okay then uh, whether it is a pressure based solver or density based solver now i have already mentioned that uh, for compressible flow we take equation of state that is a density based where the density is variable and in our mechanical case it is a pressure based solver where we use the pressure correction equation once we uh, select the model uh, then software will ask about the material properties like for if there is only fluid flow it will ask density and viscosity if it is uh, fluid flow with the heat transfer then it will along with the uh, density and viscosity it will ask specific heat cp thermal conductivity k okay now what happens we know that in the books the properties uh, for air and water are easily available but suppose you want to do the simulation for any chemical so where will you find the property so there is one website called as uh, matweb.com okay so matweb.com you can find uh, the free properties as well as some uh, chemicals they give the paid properties then uh, you need to define the cell zone software need to tell uh, that whether the particular domain is rotating or non rotating if it is not rotating no issue if it is rotating then the software will add centrifugal force and corollary force okay so that's why uh, we need to tell the software whether the domain is rotating or stationary then boundary conditions 
we have to select the patch and give the boundary condition boundary condition means what we tell the software the value of uh, variables like whether it is okay then comes the uh, initial condition so initial conditions uh, the name itself tells that it is a condition in the domain where it is a condition everywhere in the domain at the starting of simulation okay so it is a real condition uh, in case of uh, transient simulation or unsteady simulation but it is just a starting uh, value for steady state simulation then we can move uh, to the next that is the stopping criteria please understand uh, like uh, structure and analysis in the structure analysis number of the elements are very less so we can uh, have the direct solution of that with the matrices method okay but in case of uh, cfd number of elements are more and we cannot have a direct solution so what we do is uh, we use uh, iterative methods like gauss iterative method so as it is iterative uh, we need to tell the software where to stop okay so there are different uh, criteria like in the steady state it will be either number of the iterations like after 500 iterations to stop or the maximum residual value permitted if it is a reach then it will stop okay it falls below the maximum value set of the residual it will stop then uh, we can move uh, to the sec ne uh, next is for unsteady for unsteady simulation we have to give the two criteria as what is the end time and what is the maximum residual value permitted per time step okay when both are achieved it will stop okay then comes uh, solution control like in the car we have brake for controlling the speed of the car to stop the car same way we need to control the solution here cfd engineers are not very lucky as compared to the structural engineer because many time the solution get diverged and we need to control the solution for this uh, there are the for steady state uh, problem uh, there are the relaxation parameters like for momentum equation and for pressure equation okay but in case of uh, unsteady simulation there is only one parameter that is the time state then comes uh, the boundary conditions as the name suggests the condition which are given at the boundary okay mostly boundary condition do not vary throughout the calculation and that is the must okay please uh, understand uh, that uh, boundary condition uh, will uh, decide the flow inside the domain okay like you take the case of the pipe in the pipe if there is a more flow so there will be more pressure drop okay so the flow is the boundary okay flow is the boundary more the flow uh, what will happen pressure drop will be more less the flow less is the pressure drop now uh, we can see uh, uh, the types of the boundary uh, basically there are uh, uh, these are wall boundary condition okay so wall boundary condition here uh, the wall can be a translational or it can have the translation or rotational velocity for the uh, only fluid flow uh, will assign uh, whether it is a no slip condition please uh, consider uh, that in the fluid mechanics uh, near the wall relative velocity is zero if this is stationary the velocity fluid will be also stationary if it is moving with the velocity 10 meter per second velocity will be also 10 near the wall that is called as no slip condition so default condition is a no slip okay 
and next condition is a free sleep uh, condition free sleep is what happens uh, there will not be any viscosity and it will be easy for it to move then uh, we have to give the wall roughness please understand in the default uh, cfd assumes uh, that uh, the wall is uh, smooth but if we take the case of the pump impeller the pump impellers are made by casting and their roughness they are not smooth so in that case we need to also provide the value of the roughness now for heat transfer what boundary condition to be given uh, one of three boundary condition we need to give the heat flux heat flux means what A heat per unit area okay now some softwares we can give the heat it will automatically calculate the heat flux then next is uh, whether it is adiabatic no heat transfer insulated next we can give the constant wall temperature these are the different boundary condition we can give for the heat transfer okay so this uh, we saw for the wall now uh, we'll see the symmetry boundary condition what happens if you see uh, the diagram here uh, the diagram is symmetric about the red line as well as the flow is symmetric so instead of solving the full uh, object we can divide uh, the object in the half portion we can take left half and we'll say that red line red uh, surface as what symmetric this will uh, reduce the compression time required because less the number of element faster is a simulation okay it will take less time to calculate but we have to uh, be careful that uh, this symmetry Should not affect your accuracy. Okay, so we have to ensure that phenomenon is really symmetric in the nature. Now, next is a periodic. In the periodic thing, what happens? The flow pattern is repeated. Like you can see here, many cylinders are taking all this big domain. you can just take this uh, five uh, elements uh, like a red line i have shown i will say this red line as what translation periodicity now you take the right hand side example there are the injector four injectors and they are uh, symmetric about the axis so we can say there are the four segment we can make and this four uh, one four segment is repeated okay so the line shown by green color we can treat is as what rotational periodic uh, it is the rotational periodic phase okay so we, we can only simulate the quarter one fourth portion of the cylinder okay and uh, that will save our uh, lot of uh, effort so similarly i have shown one more uh, translational periodic uh, example at the bottom now next come uh, inlet there is a inlet outlet and wall these are the main boundary conditions at the inlet we can uh, specify the pressure or we can specify the either velocity or the flow rate then at the outlet we can specify the pressure or we can specify the velocity now uh, people have tried many combinations of boundary condition and they come to, uh, came to know that if you give the velocity at the inlet and pressure at the outlet is the most robust boundary condition others combinations are not robust okay so mostly we give the velocity or mass flow rate at the inlet and uh, uh, what we do uh, velocity at the inlet or mass flow rate at the inlet or pressure at the outlet so please understand the life of the cfd engineer is uh, not very easy okay so convergence is a major issue 
So there are the ways uh, to improve the convergence. You can start with the laminar and then move to the turbulence, or where there is a recirculation uh, or uh, otitis, we can extend the domain at the inlet and outlet. This will affect the, the solution, but sometimes the some uh, even uh, slightly uh, different solution is okay for our understanding. So now we'll just see the uh, initial conditions. Uh, initial conditions are uh, only put at the beginning of the analysis. Uh, and they are very important in case of the transient analysis where it is a, a actual condition, starting condition is there. And for steady state simulation, it is just a random uh, initial condition. Okay, so it has nothing uh, to do with the reality. Okay, so sometimes uh, we can also improve uh, the convergence uh, by by having uh, appropriate initial condition in case of the steady state simulation. Okay. In a real life, uh, let us uh, move to the turbulence uh, modeling. Please understand uh, in case of mechanical engineering, most of the our application falls under the category of turbulence. So let us see what is the turbulence is. Turbulence is what? Fluctuation of flow uh, properties like uh, pressure, velocity continuously. And these uh, fluctuations we cannot uh, sense with the normal uh, instrument, but like sophisticated instrument like hot wire anemometer, we can see that uh, there is fluctuation of velocity and uh, temperature. So this fluctuation is continuous. It is having a high frequency, but amplitude is small. So uh, such phenomenon, if you want to simulate, uh, it will take a lot of resources. So what we do is actually we, uh, Average mathematically uh, the turbulent Navier-Stokes equation, the momentum equation for turbulent flow, and uh, then what we get uh, the unknown quantities. Uh, we do some mathematical treatment, and that is called as uh, turbulence modeling. That mathematical treatment is called as what well, turbulence model. Now let us uh, see how to identify uh, turbulent flow. If, your lamp, uh, if, uh, if for the flow through the pipe, if the Reynolds number is less than 2300, it is laminar. And if the Reynolds number is more than 4000, it is a turbulent. Okay. Now let us move to the external flow. The external flow, if the Reynolds number is uh, more than 110 raised to 5, the flow is what? Uh, turbulent. Please understand, even in the con uh, the natural convection uh, flow can become turbulent. Uh, even in the natural convection flow can become turbulent. Okay. So what is condition for that? Is a Rayleigh number. If the Rayleigh number is more than ten raised to nine, uh, the flow can become turbulent. Okay. So we need to. In such case, we have to switch on the. Uh, turbulence modeling. Okay. Now, uh, now we'll uh, see uh, the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equation. It is called as RANS. Rans is what it is. Uh, uh, momentum equation and it is a time average. When it is time average, we would get some unknown quantities. And for this unknown quantities, we we'll do some mathematical uh, treatment to get the uh, model called as turbulence models. Okay. So uh, there are different turbulence models. 
okay uh, so one particular model is not suitable for the all the applications so we have to select particular turbulence model for particular application so i will show you here there is one uh, one uh, one equation model that is the spallet almaras which is mostly used for external flow and for mechanical industry people mostly use the epsilon model which is two equation model k omega model which is also two equation model but it requires uh, more number of the cells then uh, six equation model uh, that is uh, reynolds phase modeling okay then comes uh, uh, large eddy simulation large uh, it is uh, here what happens it is better than rans here large it is are sol and small it is the model okay small it is are model and large it is are sol so it is uh, it gives better accuracy but it is require more memory and time to calculate okay then uh, next one is uh, direct uh, numerical simulation dns now because of uh, advancement in the computational resources fast computers are available now people are now trying to directly solve the turbulent navier stokes equation okay they have started directly solving the turbulent navier stokes equation now uh, along with the rans like in cape's law model uh, to uh, reduce the number of elements uh, near the wall we can use the wall function okay for wall function uh, this, there is some criteria that you have to select the element near the wall in a such way that uh, y plus is from 30 to 100 okay but for k omega we require more number of cells and it uh, requires the y plus to be less than 2 okay so the k omega is better uh, for turbo machines but it requires more number of cell okay but if you see the cape stud is more robust uh, turbulence model and uh, there are more less chances of uh, okay and say divergence okay this is uh, about uh, the first ppt now uh, we will see uh, the there are numerous uh, automotive applications where there is the fluid flow heat transfer and combustion so this is a wide area of potential for safety in the automobile industries and we know that uh, in the, the india we have very good uh, automotive industry so a critical thing uh, for from the safety point of view in the automotive applications uh, we need to handle uh, complicated geometry and its calculation okay so cfd is used in the various applications Uh, like uh, vehicle aerodynamics engine simulation and internal uh, vehicle internal flow simulation so uh, what i will do is uh, i will cover the vehicle aerodynamics and engine simulation so i will just uh, move to the uh, another ppt so we we'll move to the this ppt okay so now this ppt is about vehicle aerodynamics so what is aerodynamics it is a branch of fluid dynamics 
so what it does is study the motion of air uh, and when it interacts with the moving objects okay so that is called as aerodynamics in reality uh, what happens air is stationary and vehicle will move but what we do uh, one option for aerodynamic testing is what wind tunnel so what we do in wind tunnel we maintain the relative velocity of the air with respect to the vehicle so we keep the vehicle stationary and move the air okay we cannot test on the road aerodynamic test so what we do we test in the lab in the wind tunnel okay so how we test so that relative velocity is set okay so instead of uh, moving the vehicle we move the air with the same velocity of the vehicle okay so whether the screen is uh, visible no sir ppt is not visible okay because uh, i have shared the ppt So I'll just go go and share the screen. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, earlier people used to uh, study the aerodynamic performance in the wind tunnel. Okay. But now we have option of same. so to aerodynamics we understand the flow field around an object our purpose is to find the forces and the moment acting on the object so aerodynamics is basically divided into the two categories uh, one is uh, external aerodynamics and uh, another is uh, internal aerodynamics so in external aerodynamics we study the flow around the object now let us uh, understand uh, uh, fuel uh, energy utilization in the vehicle which is uh, moving on the highways okay so if you see uh, the uh, losses energy lost in the aerodynamics is around 11% okay if you see other losses so it is a very uh, huge loss and we can reduce this once you reduce the loss as well uh, your uh, mileage uh, will improve so our aim of uh, conducting uh, vehicle aerodynamics is uh, to reduce the drag Uh, in a such a way that it will reduce the fuel consumption okay once you reduce the drag it will reduce the fuel consumption then next is uh, uh, improve the stability that we will understand how it is helping us then to so study the for inter, uh, internal aerodynamics to study the ventilating and cooling of passenger compartment then and next is uh, uh, to improve the safety of the vehicle we we'll understand uh, how it is concerned about the safety in the next slides okay we can see here in the graph so uh, we have plotted uh, the three curves uh, or power mass and drag if you reduce the power uh, then uh, there is a uh, power of the engine then there is a reduction of fuel consumption if you reduce the mass then there is also reduction of fuel consumption but if you see the drag drag curve is uh, more steeper as compared to the mass and power so if you reduce the drag it is uh, more impact you can say on the fuel consumption 
now we'll understand uh, when the drag is uh, dominant if you see in the graph so it is more dominant at the high speed rather than at the low speed if you run at 40 km per hour it is uh, we can say the aerodynamic is not much important but if you run at a 60 80 100 km per hour yes it is uh, dominant uh, drag is dominant and it will have the effect on the power consumption so uh, components of vehicle aerodynamics uh, flow past uh, vehicle body flow past uh, vehicle components like wheel heat exchanger brakes uh, windshield this is our front glass okay front uh, glass and flow in the passenger compartment so uh, basically people uh, use the wind tunnel to evaluate experimental performance but nowadays uh, along with uh, wind tunnel uh, we will have the computational fluid dynamics to assist us okay So just move further. So uh, here aim of safety analysis is to find the forces, lift and drag at the different velocities uh, to locate the streamline and to find whether there is a gap in the streamline and body. And then this gap indicates uh, the flow separation and uh, recirculation, okay. It indicates what uh, and which are the bad phenomena uh, to be avoided. So what we do, we match the uh, body shape to the streamline. That's what the body shape uh, obtained is called as what? Streamline board. Then we know uh, different velocities at different locations. Then to locate the places of flow separation and avoid such flow separation by uh, improving the shape of the vehicle. Now we can uh, see here the CFD simulation of uh, motorbike uh, biker. Okay. So you can see uh, this is the pressure plot. You can see the red thing where there the pressure will be more because of stagnation. Okay. The less pressure, uh, so negative pressure will act there. Okay. And on the top, you can see uh, the top of the helmet is see blue color. Okay, so there is a, a negative pressure. As the same thing happens in the vehicle aerodynamics, as we know that the when the area on the top, what happens? Uh, the area becomes uh, small. So velocity increases. When velocity increases, what will happen? The pressure reduces. So such a situation is created in the car. So at high speed, what happens? The lift force act on the car and what happens because of this, there creates the safety issue. We lose the contact of the tire with the ground, okay? So all of a sudden, suppose you want to apply the brake, what will happen? You are not able to apply the brake because there is a loss of traction. So there is safety concern. So we also see how much is the lift force. Okay, on such a vehicles. So in uh, these are the steps uh, for external aerodynamics. Okay, I've just shown in the open form software how the it is done. Okay, to create the domain, give the boundary at inlet, outlet, side symmetry and upper symmetry, then pressure outlet. Bike will be again wall and lower wall, that is a road. Okay, so you can see here the pressure field. You can see the vectors. Okay, uh, so this was uh, about uh, vehicle aerodynamics. Uh, now we'll move to the, we'll move to the next thing about the engine. In the simulation, okay. So first, I will uh, stop this. Okay. Now I'll share the new PPT for the 
engine. Are you able to see the PPT? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is about the engine simulation. I will just uh, display. Now, uh, when it comes to the engine simulation, uh, so there will be fluid flow, there will be heat transfer, there will be chemical reaction, there will be multi-phase flow. So the complications are very much high in case of uh, IC engine simulation. Okay. So, so it contains flow, heat transfer, combustion, multi-phase flow. So this uh, complications are there in the engine simulation. So uh, here uh, uh, we need to note uh, that uh, combustion in the petrol engine is uh, different than diesel engine. Okay. So, so petrol engine is what? Pre-mix combustion. Pre-mix combustion is what? Before uh, coming to the engine cylinder, before coming to the engine cylinder, both fuel, that is a petrol. Hello, sir. Hello.
हेलो ड्यू टू टेक्निकल इश्यूज सर जस्ट गॉट डिस्कनेक्टेड प्लीज वेट फॉर अ फ्यू मिनट्स ही इज ट्राइंग टू कनेक्ट अगेन so you can uh, allow me to share the ppt yes sir yes so as i mentioned uh, premix uh, combustion occurs in the petrol engine okay so uh, for example the si engine is a premix combustion so premix combustion is much more difficult to model uh, than non premix combustion as uh, premix combustion occur as a thin uh, propagating uh, flame affected by the turbulence it is very thin area where this combustion occurs and then in the uh, flame uh, front moves uh, further for uh, subsonic uh, flows uh, rate of uh, propagation of uh, flame depends on uh, laminar flame speed and turbulence since the laminar flame thickness are uh, of millimeter size or smaller uh, hence uh, we required uh, good resolution in this uh, area and that resolution is not affordable okay so in premix combustion uh, modeling essentially lies uh, capturing the turbulent flame speed uh, which are affected by the laminar flame speed and the turbulence okay so uh, partially premix combustion uh, sh shows the properties of both it occurs when uh, additional oxidizer or fuel enters the premix system so gmont uh, turbulent flame closure model for uh, premix uh, mod uh, premix uh, fuel is used it involves the solution of uh, transfer model for 
reaction uh, progress variable c what is the mean of uh, reaction progress variable c is uh, that if the reaction progress variable is zero means uh, it is unburned uh, we can say mixture of the fuel and air and if the c is one means what it is burnt so we visualize uh, in the cfd that uh, Uh, at what location the c is zero and what location it is uh, uh, c is one so c is uh, called as the reaction progress variable okay so we solve this uh, this is solved by the software now uh, let us uh, move to the non uh, pre mix uh, combustion here the mixing takes place uh, just uh, before combustion that is diesel engine so the equation for mass fraction for each species is solved if n species in the mixture then equation for n minus 1 species is solved mass fraction of n species is calculated as 1 minus sum of the mass fractions of n minus 1 species so in the diesel engine simulation uh, our aim is uh, to reduce nox and soot but reducing the same uh, time is quite difficult so soot and nox can be reduced by enhancing the air fuel mixture to uh, improve the combustion so experimental research still does not give us enough uh, information about how a uh, complex thermo and fluid dynamics process uh, that occurs in the diesel engine and one more thing we need to add here that uh, uh experiment uh, experimental things about the engines are quite expensive and although i am time consuming so uh, just we'll see diesel engine simulation so first is the injection process fuel jet interaction uh, with uh, what happens in the diesel engine we inject the fuel uh, in the air during the compression or just at the end of the compression fuel uh, jet interact with the air inside the cylinder and knowledge of air movement inside the cylinder is great important please understand in the diesel engine for uh, mixing we need to create the swirl inside the engine so we should have the knowledge of how the air movement is there inside the cylinder is important for and if there is turbulence or swirl in the combustion chamber uh, it will uh, complete the reaction and will reduce the pollutants so objective of uh, cfd is to give uh, support to experimental research by providing some insight into the complex phenomenon that occurs in the cylinder and combustion chamber of the diesel engine okay so it is complementing uh, the experimental research so how we do that we calculate the air flow through the inlet ports and the cylinder then the second one is we calculate the combustion please understand here in the diesel engine the mixing of uh, air and injected fuel is very very important if there is a proper turbulence or swirl is there inside the engine once it is the proper mixing is there there are more chances of proper combustion and then uh, you can improve the efficiency okay so following uh, since this study can be done in the diesel engine intake uh, we can study the intake manifold and then we can do the uh, cylinder simulation so uh, in intake manifold uh, the two parameters that characterize the air flow through the inlet and outlet are the 
coefficient of discharge of that and the swirl number it is denoted by the s okay so coefficient of discharge of that uh, passage uh, is uh, important here so uh, there are two uh, simulations first is a static simulation you can see here we are shown the inlet walls and from outlet uh, we have taken the pressure total pressure temperature k and epsilon are mentioned at the inlet and outlet uh, we are giving some pressure okay and outflow now we can see here the how the swirl is created and that is important okay swirl is uh, we purposely create the swirl okay so there are some uh, swirl created inside the intake port of the wall okay now you can see uh, the flow inside uh, the cylinder you can see the velocity vectors so here a uh, particular paper it is showing that uh, flow coefficient uh, is uh, very much close to the uh, experiment okay flow coefficient of the particular wall position now move to the cylinder simulation which is one is there are two approaches one is called as mummy mummy is what multiple mesh motion and mesh to mesh interpolation so what we have we do we use the different meshes for different crank position okay so if you use the same mesh what happens uh, the aspect ratio changes very much because in compression and expansion the size of the particular element changes drastically so it is most preferred mummy approach is most preferred then next approach is uh, fully automatic mesh adoption okay here one mesh is only used and it is used for all the crank position for the piston uh, in the cylinder between the piston and cylinder okay so mesh motion is combined with uh, changes in the mesh but uh, maintaining the mesh quality is very difficult here so better we go for a mummy approach now we can see here uh, mummy approach so there are different meshes are used eight meshes are used from crank angle 0 to 20 there is one mesh from 20 degree to 45 degree there is second mesh 45 degree to 75 there is another mesh 75 to 120 there is next mesh like this okay so you can see uh, like uh, see first and last 0 to 20 you can see just very small uh, space is there okay now 152 uh, 170 there are very huge so such a drastic uh, shape change occurs and we need to have different measure that is the more uh, we can say uh, it is more correct to have different uh, measures okay you can see here the turbulent kinetic energy uh, you can see the temperature you can see the velocity field you can see uh, here uh, for intake stroke uh, velocity temperature turbulent kinetic energy now uh, in the compression you can see here uh, how the mesh is drastically changing and we know that uh, the mesh should not drastically change as the aspect ratio if it is very very high it will affect our accuracy of the solution okay so we can see here injection and combustion you can see here uh, the combustion process and the soot formation 
again in the top it is the temperature showing high temperature means what compression and the bottom it is showing the formation of the suit so here again particular paper it has shown that uh, the pressure and major pressure and calculated are matching now uh, what we use uh, there is a engine model is there in the free software called as open foam so i am i am showing here uh, the mesh at different crank angles okay you can see here in the first photograph the aspect ratio is uh, the element is very much vertical and in the last diagram it becomes horizontal okay so aspect aspect ratio changes to the very high uh, you can say high value so it is not desirable but sometime for quick simulation it is okay so there is also a module in the ansys board uh, bench for the engine simulation so you can do their uh, port flow analysis cold flow analysis so in port flow we just see the flow rate and swirl with the static engine geometries and cold flow analysis engine cycle with moving geometries and in cylinder combustion simulation power exhaust stokes with the fuel injection ignition reaction for pollutant prediction on the moving geometry in the full cycle simulation what we do simulation of entire engine cycle with air flow fuel injection combustion and reaction so the process i have just shown in here process for engine simulation so we have to give the properties here in the properties like even in open form we have to give the connecting rod length crank radius then we have to give the rpm lift of the wall okay you can see here the here parameters then we do input geometry select the required faces meshing then go for solver so to switch on the energy equation here along with the turbulence so give the body condition at inlet and outlet then give the relaxation parameter then after simulation can do the post processing thank you so uh, i ended uh, this today's uh, talk so if you have any questions uh, you can ask yes sir uh, okay uh, if you if someone has question they can write in chat box your yeah, participants please uh, if you have any questions you can uh, write in chat box okay uh i think uh, there is no questions uh, okay. is there any soft other software for it uh, there is question from uh, rakesh sukhar i just check them i think yes uh he is asking regarding uh, is there any other software uh, for uh, for the same so uh and the free software there is one free software called as open foam uh, engine uh, simulation can be done okay but uh, it is difficult to learn that is possible uh, then uh, there is uh, one software uh, uh, that is ansys is there 
and one more software is there which is dedicated to the engine simulation that uh, i don't recall the name now i will tell to the uh, om parvashi sir uh, later on okay so three softwares are generally there for engine simulation so is there any question no 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 more questions uh, i can wait from chat box and if uh, if any questions uh, i will uh, forward you uh, to mail okay no issue okay okay, uh, okay finally uh, i would like to say uh, yeah, thank I, you i just uh, i just recall uh, there is one dedicated a uh, software uh, cfb software for uh, uh, cfb simulation of engine it is called as kiwa okay. there is a dedicated and it is very costly maybe the industries can afford it maybe academic will not afford it okay kiwa software is there for dedicated cfb simulation of uh, engine ah uh, Sir, one question from Rakesh Sudhar is there: uh, How to add such uh, fluids which is not included in NCS? We can include. We have to just uh, type the property, and that will be included for that simulation. So better, uh, I told you one website, mapweb.com, where you get all the engineering properties of uh, all the chemicals. So even the liquid metals we get there. Okay. okay sir yes. okay sir uh, okay sir uh, thank you uh, once again uh, i would like to say thank you for uh, to all also for attending the webinar and thank you once again sir for enlightening your presentations uh, on the right way to the automobile applications and uh, i am uh, very grateful you took the time out uh, from your busy schedule for giving a wonderful A webinar on the CFD analysis, uh, which is which is respect to the automotive applications, and uh, uh, we learn number of things like uh, CFD analysis steps uh, by referring uh, how to identify the domain, how to write uh, use the right approximations, uh -huh. then way uh, right solution methods, uh -huh. and uh, you have explained three different. Uh, Parameters like uh, aerodynamic simulations, uh, engine simulations. Uh, so uh, it's a wonderful session. Uh, thank you once again, sir. And uh, we will remain in contact with you. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Omkar Vasi, for inviting me. And thank you for the audience. Even though subject was tough, uh, many students took the interest. and attended this uh, thank you i will leave now okay thank you thank you sir yes. okay thank you sir